That's the Business Secretary Vince Cable speaking to me a short time ago. Well, joining me now is Mario Dunn from the campaign group Save Our Royal Mail and the Conservative MP, Ned Him Zahal. We thank you both for gen uh, joining me tonight. Uh, Mario Dunn, let's start with you. Has Vince Cable convinced you there this is a good idea? Not at all. I think it's a really bad idea. It's a bad idea for the customers of Royal Mail, uh, and that's everyone in the country. It's a bad idea particularly for people who live in rural areas because there isn't really, it's not really feasible to suggest that in the long term Royal Mail will want to carry on loss making services. And it's not good for other users like small businesses who are very price sensitive to, to increases. And I think we'll see uh, continued price increases because this company will now have to return money to shareholders uh, instead of keeping it itself. And Nadim Zahawi, that's certainly something that many of our viewers are saying tonight. Uh, one of them in particular saying, uh, this is Mo, I won't trust the Royal Mail anymore or be confident in selling my parcels and receiving them if it's owned by a private company. I have to say, the population don't like it and neither do the, uh, neither do the workers. So why are you backing this? Well, if you look at what's happened in other countries like Germany, Deutsche Post in Belgium, their postal service has actually improved. The services have got better and they've got stronger as they've gone into private ownership. And we want the same thing to happen with Royal Mail. Mario is scaremongering. Mario used to work for the Communication Workers Union. I don't know who's funding his campaign. Maybe he'll tell us tonight who's funding it. Um, the reality is the universal service, six day service, is protected in legislation, which we voted for in 2011. That is complete. Have to, for Parliament has to vote again for that to go away. There is a regulator in Ofcom which makes sure that prices of letters are affordable, affordable to business and to the consumers in rural and urban areas. This is scaremongering. The reality is the Royal Mail, in the, since 2001 to date, in five years have lost money. It's now begun to make money. It has to go to a minister to ask to buy a computer. Now, if we release it to raise money on the markets, in the private sector, they are able to invest the UK is probably, okay. your viewers are probably the, the, the people who are online transacting okay. to get parcels. That's a huge opportunity. You're we are leaders in online retail. The Royal Mail has an advantage that can right. grow okay. and take more market you share. You accuse Mario Dunn of being a scaremonger. Well, you can tell, if you can tell us is who he's well, working you can, you can for. You can try and shoot, shoot the messenger, actually. The reality is... Who is funding your campaign? Is, well, our funds come from a variety of sources, who? and we have a number of organisations who sponsor our campaign. For example? But I, I want to talk about does it matter? the issues. Well, it should matter. Well, I'd, I'd, I'd like to talk, I'd like to talk about it. the issues. It's, it's not relevant who I am and where I'm from. It's the issues, and it's the impact this will have on customers, which is Transparency the issue. Transparency is and important, there is, there OK, is... but Nadim Sahawi said there, and so did Vince Cable, you've got a regulator and it's enshrined in law. So what are you worried well, about? I, I'm worried about this complacency because all I've been hearing today is, uh, and, and Nadim's got his lines here, which he's parroting very well, um, is that, uh, that it's all going to be fine. It's not going to be fine. It doesn't work. You can't get a court into a pint pot. Royal Mail will not be able to carry on comp competing with, with other carriers in the, in the big cities uh, and putting all their resources into that, returning cash to shareholders, and at the same time trying to fulfil these obligations into in the rural areas and, and the, on prices. Something has to give at some point. And if you look at the track record of privatised companies, that's exactly what happens, isn't it? And again, another tweet that you can answer from one of our viewers called Dirty Martini. Profit was an agenda the Royal Mail wasn't interested in, so now prices will soar when it's privatised. And this and is are a, you telling But me? this is a genuine concern of that course. our viewers have. So how are of you course, going to allay that? Which is why we have a regulator, and, and very clear in the legislation, the regulator has to take into account... The legislation can change, the six can't day, it? Well, we'd have to change it in Parliament. That's and the whole thing. And you might thing. one day. Well, the idea at the moment is to make sure that it's absolutely protected by legislation. And the regulator, this is really important. So people are worried that you know, companies like TNT can actually claw away at some of these services, making it you know, unaffordable for Royal Mail to deliver the, 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 the six-day universal service. The regulator very clearly has instructions from Parliament that they must take into account the protection of the six-day universal service when looking at competition i.e. not allowing companies like TNT to compete unfairly with Royal Mail. That's really, really important. And it's worrying that you've got people like Mary who won't tell us who he's funded by going out scaremongering about this. My posties in Stratford and do a brilliant job. They've done a brilliant job in the reorganisation. They're worried about their jobs though now, aren't well, they? Well, they, they don't need to be because under the, the 2P, which is the technical term, their jobs are protected, whoever is the owner. This is really okay. important stuff. And instead of going to the minister to ask to buy a computer, they can actually raise hundreds of millions of pounds to compete 
with Deutsche Post, with the Belgians, with the Austrians. This is important. And all those examples, you mentioned other privatizations. Would you like to see BT go back into public hands where you have to wait three weeks for a landline? No, you wouldn't, Emma. I don't think much has changed on that front. But anyway, Mary, let's bring you back in here. Why does the Royal Mail deserve special treatment? Why should it be subsidised by the government when that funding could go to the NHS and to education? Well, absolutely. This is another myth that the government is peddling, which, uh, which Nadim's uh, uh, party to here, is that somehow if Royal Mail spends in the public sector spends 5p, it's 5p that's not spent well, on the plaster in the NHS. But it's wrong. It's he's absolute wrong, nonsense. He? Yes, he, and he's deliberately wrong. Uh, uh, and to, to a... To, uh, to an absurd point. Royal Mail just returned profits of £440 million. It can look after itself perfectly well. Ministers have allowed the railways and the, some water companies to borrow money uh, off balance sheet in the public sector. If ministers chose tomorrow to give Royal Mail that status, they could do it. It wouldn't have an, one iota of an impact on the balance sheet. Will you both be buying shares? Well, I think it's a great opportunity for the posties to actually get the £1,500 worth of shares for free. By the way, some people shares? ask, I would I'd definitely look at buying shares. So would the institutional investors. Why wouldn't they? This is a great business. £9 billion a year turnover and will grow because the parcel service okay. is growing because of online transactions. And Mario, how I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't recommend people buy shares in this business at the moment. Its margins don't make a good profit. Its margins on its activity are quite thin. And I think the government are very worried about that. OK, Mario Dan and Adib Zahawi, thank you very much for your thoughts tonight. Well, later on this evening, we're going to be looking at the dilemma facing working mums these days. Many admit feeling guilty about leaving their children at home when they go off to earn money. So should you stay at home and sacrifice your career if you're a woman, maybe even a man, or can you find the right work-family balance these days? First.